There's this girl in our class that everyone calls the Ice Queen. Are you serious, man? You confessed your feelings to the Ice Queen? Yeah, I did, actually. But she just gave me the bums rush. I guess I was just not her type. Whoa! The Ice Queen really lives up to her reputation. I knew she would just brush me off, but I guess I was expecting it. As with other days, the talk was all about the Ice Queen. Shows how famous she is around here, I suppose. Hmm. As usual, everyone is so nice and energetic today. They just keep talking about how cute she is. Or if she did this or that. I can't understand why they're so worked up over nothing. For me, Saku Hasegawa that is, I'm a bit flabbergasted by all this commotion in the classroom. Wonder why he confesses his love for her when he knows he's just gonna get rejected. Maybe they figure they have a slight chance they might just succeed. It's like a damn lottery. Kinda of feel sorry for them, but darn it! I wish some of that confidence would rub off on me. But I kinda understand their feeling that there might be a slight chance. Nah, can't fathom what goes on in their heads. Besides, I can't fathom why they would even want to confess to the likes of her. It was then I heard a familiar voice coming from the classroom entrance. Good morning. I looked over towards that direction and standing there was this young, beautiful girl. Hey, Irie! Good morning! That beauty was none other than Irie Nijima. When she entered, all the girls in the classroom gathered around her. She just enters the classroom and all eyes turn towards her. Just goes to show how well known she is around here. And oh yeah, talk about being well known. Hey, Irie babe! I'm not your babe. Like that, she can be pretty cool and abrupt towards the guys. She just won't interact with them if possible. When she does, she usually manipulates them to her advantage. Seems the queen is on a roll. Yep, that's right. She's the infamous ice queen that my classmates were talking about earlier. Hmm? What? Do you have something to say? Ah, uh, nothing. Uh, then would you stop checking me out? It's really irritating. Yeah, yeah, sorry to hurt your feelings, princess. Seriously, how could anybody confess their love to someone like this? She is really cute on the outside, but to drool over her? Give me a break. I'd rather be single for the rest of my life than be with her. What is it about everyone? Are they all into S&M? Is that resentment in your voice? Yeah, well, I always sound like this. Scary? <laughs> Does she have ESP or something? Stop slacking off and hurry up and carry those boxes. All right already. Just can't ignore the ice queen. As I was heading home, I spotted Nijima ordering the other classmates around. So what do we have here? The queen and her minions doing whatever it is they're doing. Anyways, it's got nothing to do with me. But I do always wonder why those guys keep doing what they're told. And I would refuse right away. I realize that she puts out this vibe where you can't refuse, but... There is no real reason to follow her orders. Wish people would realize once and for all that it only makes her even more domineering. Hey, you there. Oh, hope you're not trying to pick me up, are you? Why would I want to do that while I'm so busy? Why don't you help out too and carry these boxes? Pretty annoying to get ordered around as if you're some sort of slave. Why doesn't anybody defy her? She doesn't even see me as a human. I just can't understand it. Why should I? Huh? What's that expression on her face? Did I crack a joke or something? Just asking why I have to do it. After all, you were asked to do this job, so you do it. Uh, yeah, so what? Oh boy, more like a tyrant than an ice queen. Cut the crap. Order your usual minions to do your dirty work for you. After I told her off, I just walked away. Hey, wait one second. Nijima's hand stretched out and accidentally shoved me. <gasps> yep, ended up with a plaster cast. Won't be moving it for a while. Man, seriously? Well, gives me ample reason not to talk to her anymore. I'm sure she understands the reasons why. And it had to be my right arm. I can't use a fork, much less pull my damn zipper up properly. I guess I'm gonna have to ask my poor left hand to do all the work. But it was not too serious, so I should be thankful for that, I suppose. I was sitting there staring out the window thinking all this. That's when she slowly approached. Good morning. Am I dreaming? What do you mean by that? Can't I say hello? 
Well, I've only seen you ordering people around. Never got a glimpse of you saying hi to anybody. Hey man, did you catch that? The Ice Queen just greeted someone! See what I mean? Everyone's jaws just dropped. I, um... I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Uh, you know, the arm. Oh yeah, you already apologized. It is what it is. So don't worry about it. But I do worry. Hmm? What is it about her? Such a hassle talking to her. Not sure if it's because she felt bad about what happened, but I didn't detect any coolness in her voice. That attitude made her seem kind of cute, but there was that sense of foreboding still lingering inside me. Anyway, that was just an accident. Although we argued before that, I was at fault too. But I... Please, don't say any more. I'm gonna start feeling sorry about it all. Or, if you're feeling so guilty, you want to nurse me back to health, is that it? I just said it as a joke. I figured she would feel a little better about it. But I'm not sure what happened. Okay, open wide. Uh, for some reason, she started taking care of me. I can eat it myself. It's not your right hand. This way is much easier for you. So shut up and eat. To be honest, I really didn't think she would take me seriously. Ever since that encounter, she took my joke seriously and started nursing me back to health. I kept telling her it was just a joke, but she insisted. Did she really feel that much guilt? I'm the one who was starting to feel guilty. Come on, eat up! A so-called ice queen nursing someone. The image just doesn't... Okay, let's go home. Let's go home? The ice queen approached me after school and asked me to go home together. If we don't go home together, how am I supposed to take care of you? You're coming home with me too? How devoted are you planning to be? Hey, now she's asking me to go home together. What's going on? Maybe the Ice Queen has her eye on Hasegawa. Or does she have something on him? Those guys will say just about anything. Are you really coming over to my place? I don't really need any help carrying my stuff. Seems obvious that I'm not carrying your stuff. Yeah, right. It's not that heavy anyway. You're only able to use your left hand, which probably makes it awkward, right? Just quiet down and let me take care of you. But come to think of it, I guess your parents will take care of you. Actually, I live alone. A what? Huh? Do you live alone? Yeah, that's right. That's why I didn't want you coming to my place. That means you need my help even more. Hey, show some hesitancy about coming to a guy's house alone. Thank you for having me here. Hey, if you're so nervous about it, you could just leave. How can I not be nervous? This is the first time I've been to a guy's house. Yeah, I kind of got that by the way you act. There's nothing you can really do here. What, are you going to bathe me or something? Yeah, I plan to feed you, bathe you, and put you to bed. That's not taking care of me. It's more like a nursing home or something. So, I got myself a young and pretty nurse. Lucky me! Anyways, you don't even like guys. Are you okay taking care of me? No, it's not okay. I still don't like guys. I don't feel real comfortable with them, always confessing their love for me. Oh yeah, so this Ice Queen stuff is all just a show? Just a ploy to keep guys away? Well, you're not completely wrong. If I retain the attitude, they tend to steer clear of me for the most part, and no more of those tedious confessions. Parents-wise, she's quite the beauty. Even when she takes a nice attitude, the guys still confess their love for her. I can imagine the sort of stuff that she's going through. So I kind of understand the attitude she takes. But that attitude is going a bit far, don't you think? It may even create some enemies. Yeah, I do feel bad about that. Well, she can be considerate about others. When she gets like this, I start to feel some sympathy toward her. When do you usually eat dinner? Huh? Uh, about 7 p.m., I guess. Hey, wait a second! I'll make dinner for you. Please, go home! What is she thinking? Staying so late at a guy's house? What do you think? Yeah, well, so you can cook, huh? <laughs> Pretty decent, huh? She made me a great dinner. Something I could never even attempt. Irie smiled confidently and looked toward me. Man, I gotta admit, she looked pretty cute. I've been preparing for marriage since childhood. Even if you had no intention of having a boyfriend? Mmm, this is super delicious! <laughs> Thank you. 
open up. You're gonna make a great wife. Now all you have to do is get over your dislike of guys and find a good guy. Uh, who are you to say? After we ate, she even helped me with my studies. It got dark out, but Nijima still would not leave, but I insisted. Okay, see you again. Yeah, thanks for everything today. It was all my fault, so you don't need to thank me. You really are... What? What is it? I like your attitude now more than the usual icy one I always see at school. Uh, uh-huh. As I said what I thought, she turned beet red. Kind of unusual for a modern-day high school student. I'm leaving. With that, she abruptly left my place. What can I say? This Nijima is way more easy to talk to. Of course, there's still that apprehension toward her, but when she stops with that icy attitude, I feel a lot more comfortable towards her. As Nijima says, this Ice Queen thing is just a social mask of sorts. After seeing how she took care of me, I concluded that deep down, she really is a kind-hearted and considerate girl. It's got nothing to do with me anymore. As I watched her walking away, I closed the door. This whole afternoon was pretty fantastic. I'll probably never again experience that. I mean, being cared for by a beautiful girl all afternoon and evening? The next morning... Good morning. Standing outside my door the next morning was none other than Nijima again. Hey, hey, hold on! I thought it was all over yesterday. What are you talking about? You don't expect an injury like that to heal in one or two days. Yeah, I realize that, but I didn't mean that. Why do you care? You have nothing to lose, right? No, I guess not. Right? Gotta say, I will never experience this again. I mean, cared for by a beautiful girl like you? <laughs> what did you just... You're not messing with me, are you? You're a real straight shooter, aren't you? My parents were pretty strict about being honest towards women. You... You're just making things more complicated. She didn't seem overly offended, though. Hey, Nijima. What? What is it? Don't you think the glaring stares from everyone in class are a bit too much? Yeah, sure is. Wonder what's up. Hey, did you hear? Someone saw the Ice Queen walking to school with that guy Hasegawa. Yeah, I heard. I also heard they came out of the same building. The possibility of them spending the whole night together is pretty high. Is it possible that Hasegawa was able to conquer the Ice Queen? Does that mean they're going steady? Hmm. Did you find out what it was all about? Yeah, apparently they all think we spent the night together and are now going steady. Ugh, that's just a completely unfounded rumor. Yeah, after all, you're only taking care of me because of this arm. How about you? Are you okay with all these rumors flying around? Me? Nah. But the rumors would be bad for you. I feel bad about that. I'm not really concerned. You, uh, you're a pretty nice guy. A week passed since those rumors started. Come on, Hasegawa. Let's get going. You got it. After a week, she was still taking care of me. We seemed to be doing everything together. We seemed to have gotten used to this lifestyle, and any animosity I had toward her completely dried up. I was thinking of making some pasta today. What do you think? I'd like to request Kabanara. <laughs> okay, then. Out with the house key. Here you go. Ijiba took the key from me and proceeded to open the front door, and a thought crossed my mind. <laughs> kind of like we're married, huh? Huh? <laughs> Give me a break. Ready? We'll change slowly. Nah, forget what I said. This is not a married couple. More like a helper and an old geezer. Well, if there actually was a good-looking old geezer like you, the helper would be overjoyed. Huh? Did I just hear praise coming from the Ice Queen? <laughs> what do you think? Don't say that with that cute face. What if I take you seriously? How are you going to handle it? I don't know. <sighs> Come on, hurry up and change, would ya? Uh, I get worried that I have no feeling of resistance when she changes my clothes. Also, when you feed me, again, no sense of resistance. I just go along. It's okay, isn't it? I feel the same way. I suppose having a girl feed you is sort of a guy's fantasy scenario, but when it goes on too long, I begin to feel shame. It can't be helped for now. You still have the cast after all. Oh yeah, when will you get this cast off? Um, pretty soon. I think that's what the doc said. I see. 
Why is she putting on a dejected expression? I thought she'd be overjoyed that she would no longer have to care for me. I thought you'd be happy on such an occasion. Uh, well, I guess. Nijima looked down, gathering her thoughts. I... I had fun taking care of you. Oh, uh, yeah? Caring for someone, huh? So in the future, maybe you'd be a good nurse or helper. But Nijima shook her head as if to say no. I thought I hated guys, but with you, that thought never crossed my mind. When Nijima said that, I was a bit surprised and was unable to say anything. Maybe it was because you never tried to take advantage of me. You looked at me not as just a girl, but as a person. That's why I enjoyed being with you. What was I to say to that? Without saying anything just wouldn't be right. Weird, isn't it? It's only with you that I feel this way. Why do you think that is? Even though I haven't had much experience dating girls, I could understand where Nijima was coming from. That's why I was hesitant in answering her. You know what? I feel the same way. I had fun the last few days. First, I thought you were a bit standoffish and really didn't want anything to do with me. At that moment, I thought I should let my true feelings out. Yeah, I guess I didn't have much appeal. Yeah, right? But after you took care of me this past week or so, my feeling toward you has changed. You're a good cook, a kind and responsible girl, plus you're really fun. So, even when this cast comes off, I sure would like to keep seeing you. Besides, I seem to have gotten hooked on your cooking. Said all this with a smile on my face. Oh, no way. Oh shoot, my misunderstanding. I want you to say it straight out. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, she's right. Maybe that was not the right way to say it. She didn't want an indirect explanation, but she wanted me to give it to her straight. Hey, you know, Nijima? My heart started to pound like a locomotive. Would you go out with me? Nijima was the Ice Queen for so long. All those guys who tried to win her heart, only to be shot down. That icy demeanor. She smiled and turned her head towards me. <gasps> yes, I love that. Oh my god! I turned out to be the guy to win the Ice Queen's heart! So what if you won? If it's you, Saku, that I can give my heart to? Well, that isn't so bad. Several days later, my cast came off and I was finally able to use my right arm again. My classmates congratulated me on not having to endure the Ice Queen's care. They all seemed annoyed that I got special treatment, but they were all happy for me. Oh yeah, and one more thing. <laughs> Good morning! Good morning, Ivy! So cute, as usual! Huh? <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> morning, Nijima. Yeah, morning. Evidently, Ari started responding to the guys in class. It's true! It ain't no dream! Man, I'm so envious of you! From that day on, the talk was all about how the Ice Queen had melted. So now that she was not the standoffish girl, her popularity among guys skyrocketed. To me... Well, I certainly didn't enjoy it. I guess she no longer dislikes guys, so that's good. But I'm not happy about all those guys clamoring for her attention. Recently, I seem to be worried about only that. Good morning, Saku. Hey, good morning. What's up? You don't seem too happy. It's nothing. I couldn't very well say that I was jealous, so I just sort of ignored her and walked away. Hey, are you jealous? she have ESP? It's just that you seem to get upset when I start talking to the other guys. So I figured maybe you were... Sorry about that. Nice of you to notice. But you know, I was kind of happy. Irie looked towards me and gave me that mischievous smile. I love it when you make that face. Why, I can't believe this is the Ice Queen that everyone was talking about such a short time ago. Where'd that cold and condescending girl go? It's as if the hard-packed ice just melted away into a softly flowing stream. Don't be such a jerk, okay? You're the only person I can say this to. I just can't help it. What can I say? Okay, then let me make your favorite tonight. Hot curry. I wonder if the old me would have ever imagined such a scenario. Going out with the beautiful Ice Queen. But looking at her now, I said to myself, Not bad, Saku. Ah, thank God. I can finish on time today. 
I'm Yuma Tamaaki, 28 years old. I'm just an average guy. Everything from my looks to my salary is, well, average. Goodbye. Ah, uh, uh, bye. You and Kuramine don't really get along, huh? I can't believe you two are still together. The one thing that isn't average about me is the fact that I'm dating the prettiest girl in the company. We still are as usual. We're having dinner together later tonight. Shouldn't you have left with her then? She likes meeting me at the spot. We've been on multiple dates, but she likes to meet me at the destination every time. You guys are actually dating, right? <laughs> Today, it was Kuramine who invited me out. I wonder what the occasion could be. Anoka Kuramine. She's my coworker who is one year under me. She's beautiful, kind, and excels at her job. She's the Madonna of the company. Before we started dating, she had been asked out by a handful of guys. Even after half a year of being together, we're not close at all. She still talks to me as if we were business partners. This is a nice restaurant. The food and drinks are delicious. Yes, I have something important I need to discuss you with. Something important? We have been dating for half a year, right? Yeah. I thought it was about time. I see. I've been thinking about that too. I'm ready to hear it. I'm guessing it's about breaking up. She doesn't seem into me after all. I see. Then let's cut to the chase. May I ask one question? Yes? What is it? How come you decided to stay with me for this long? I thought I already told you. Six months ago. Today was the company's get-together. It had been an hour and most people are already pretty drunk. May I sit next to you? kromine san uh, Yes, you can. Uh, but what happened to your seat? My seat was taken when I got back from the bathroom. Ah, uh, I see. That happens, huh? Yeah, it does. You look pretty sober. Do you usually drink? I've actually been drinking quite a bit already. My face is starting to get red. She's right. Her expression seems to be a bit brighter than usual, too. I see. Don't go overboard. Yeah, I'll be careful. I'm not as strong as you, Tamaki-san. How did you know I was strong with alcohol? Wait, you even remember my name? Yes, whenever I see you at these get-togethers, you're either drinking a lot with your superiors or taking care of other guys who drank too much. And plus, whenever I get up to leave, I always walk past you so it's difficult not to remember. You're right. I always have the aisle seat. I'm happy you remember nonetheless. Really? Uh, how can I keep the conversation going? Uh, Kuromini-san, uh, what do you do on your days off? I'm into perfume, so I like spending time with them. Spending time? Ah, I see. You do seem like the type of person who chooses carefully when buying things. No, that's not what I mean. I spend time mixing different compounds to create my own personal fragrances. I didn't know you could make perfumes from scratch. Yeah, you don't seem like someone who would be into that sort of thing. You don't use cologne, do you? What? You can tell? Like I said earlier, because you sit in the aisle, I can tell when I pass by. Most girls probably can. Is that so? Yes. Maybe the reason I can't get girls has to do with my smell. Do you think I should wear cologne from now on? I don't think you have to. If you don't use them with the proper knowledge, it can have the opposite effect. Like when guys put way too much of it, or when the smell doesn't match their natural odor. Ah, I see. If I don't have the proper knowledge, maybe I shouldn't. That explains why you smell really nice. That's inappropriate. T sorry I don't mind, but I don't think you should tell that to other girls. I'll be careful. And if you think I smell good... Huh? What is that? Never mind. Oh, okay. The company get-together ended after another hour. Excuse me, Tamaki-san. Uh, yeah. Is she gonna scold me for the comment I made back there? Can we start dating? What? 
Um, please don't misunderstand, but it's not like I like you. Lately, I've been getting tired of guys chasing after me, so I thought having a boyfriend would stop that. She's right. Romi-san has had guys asking her out at work regularly. She brushes it off, so I didn't think it was bothering her. But I guess I was wrong. Then why don't you pick somebody who's already asked you out? You must have plenty of options. I can't. I know what all those guys are after. Well, I guess you're right. Compared with them, you seem pretty harmless. Always looking after people when they get too drunk, helping people out with their work in the office. On top of that, you seem to have no interest in me, so it works out. Harmless? It's not that I have no interest, it's just that I never even thought of trying to get closer with her, since we're such different people. Well, so what is your response? Oh, okay. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yes, likewise. Ah, uh, I just remembered. I'm a convenience for her. Any misunderstandings? So this is what I mean by something important. What? Please fill it in by tomorrow. Wait, I thought we were gonna break up! A marriage certificate?! My reaction would confuse a lot of people. But you have to keep in mind that Kuromini-san has no feelings for me in this relationship. I don't know what makes you think this is about a breakup. Do you want to break up with me, Tamaki-san? No, that's not what I meant, but... I don't want to break up, but Kuromini-san doesn't seem to be interested in me at all, so... Why so sudden?! Because I'm going to go deliver it tomorrow after work. Oh, I'm in shock because it's all so sudden. I thought marriage is something that needs to be discussed months prior. We haven't even moved in together yet. We've been dating for half a year already, and it's not like we have to be living together to get married. No way! We haven't even gone on a lot of dates. We haven't even kissed each other yet. And you're bringing up marriage? There's no need for any of that. Plus, we've been going on one date per month. Haunted houses, movies, we even went to the planetarium. I've been wondering about this for a while, but... Why do we only go to dim-lit places? Um, there's no particular reason. So, you're going to marry me, right? I need to turn this in by tomorrow. It's our official six-month anniversary. That's why this has to be by tomorrow? Yes, there is no better timing. And plus, you're already 28, Tamaki-san. Don't you think it's about time? I guess you're right. Most of my friends are starting to get married, and my parents are always telling me how they want to see a grandchild. Okay, I will turn it in tomorrow, so please have it filled in. In the end, I was basically forced to fill in the marriage certificate. It's not like I dislike Kuromini-san. I admire her for her kindness and talents at work. Marrying her isn't so bad. Was she really okay with it? We're a married couple now. Are you sure I was the one? Yes, of course. Please come over to mine today. What? Can I? Yes, for our marriage anniversary. It's a bit small, but... Oh, okay. During our relationship, I have never been inside her place before. It's about time. It feels like we're actually a couple. Please excuse me. <sighs> we're finally married. I couldn't wait to... What? Oh, Tamaki-san, you were here? N nothing. Let me take your coat. Thanks. I'll prepare something to eat, so please wait while watching TV in my room. Oh, uh, okay. I haven't gone inside a girl's room since elementary school. All the fragrances, perfumes, and cosmetic goods. Things I wasn't used to seeing inside a room. I was starting to get nervous. <laughs> Nevertheless, it smells really nice in here. I should just do what she said and watch some TV. Where's the remote? Wait, I wonder where my coat went. She didn't hang it in her room closet. Huh? Is she alright? Girl Mini-san! Is everything fine? <sighs> you must scent. It's so... <gasps> there I saw a beautiful girl stirring the pot with my coat on while sniffing profusely. 
Um, what are you doing? I made this in the morning, so I'm just warming it up. It's not like I'm cooking with the coat on, so no problems there hygienically. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Darn, I was planning to keep it until our consummation. Consummation? <sighs> Let's talk while we eat. Please be seated. Uh, okay. Bon appetit. Oh, Minisan, this is delicious. I'm glad you like it. So, can I ask? Yes, please ask anything. Before I ask, take off the coat first. It's off. Can I have it back? I don't want to. Why? I can finally bathe in your wonderful smell and you just want to take it away from me? What are you talking about? If you really insist, I can give it back, but... But? Can I cuddle next to you instead? What is this term of exchange? I don't mind. Really? But what's the matter? She hopped on my lap with the happiest smile. I always thought she was avoiding me purposely, so this was a big surprise for me. I always wanted to get close to you like this, but I was holding back. I thought that if I showed you my true colors, you would dislike me. Ah, <sighs> you smell so nice. This is your true color? Where did your usual self go? Um, can I ask you something? Yes, go ahead. You're a bit of a pervert, aren't you? <gasps> I mean, you were sniffing my smell while wearing my coat. Wearing your boyfriend, I mean husband's clothes, is not a weird thing at all. There's even a word for it. Yeah, but this is an entirely different situation. Your expressions are completely different too. <sighs> I'm going to confess since we're married now. I've been hiding it from you and everyone else at work, but I have a smell fetish. So let me guess. The reason why you were blushing at the company get-together? Or... The reason why you always chose dim places for our dates? Yes, it was to hide my true emotions. My face never turns red drinking alcohol. It was just because you were next to me. I didn't want you to find out, so I covered it up with that excuse. You're right. Before you sat next to me, your face wasn't so red. I see. But do I smell that nice? I didn't notice it myself. Oh my! When I first smelled your scent at work, I was sure it was destiny. Your body odor is like a flower field with a hint of sweetness. Oh, it is the best smell in the world. This was the biggest compliment I've ever received in my life. And it was my smell. I didn't know how to feel. I would have rather had her compliment my looks or personality. But I guess that's too much to ask for. I... I understand now. I don't blame you for trying to hide that, but we were dating, so you could have at least told me about it. To tell you the truth, it was my dream to marry someone like you who was kind-hearted and smelled really nice. That's why I was so afraid of showing my true self, which is also why I made you sign that marriage certificate the way I did. I'm sorry. It was awful of me to go about it like that. Does that mean the reason why you asked me out in the first place wasn't actually because you were tired of having the other guys ask you out? You're right. I thought someone so kind like you wouldn't be able to say no if I said that. I'm sorry. But the fact I think you're really nice is not a lie. I see. Well, that makes me happy. What? You're okay with someone like me? Yeah. Although that wasn't the real you, when I thought about how you might reject me yesterday, I took it harder than I anticipated. I actually really enjoyed going on dates with you. You even took the time this morning to cook for us right before work, so that we could eat it right away, right? Although your cool side was just an act, I think your kindness or the way that you think about others are rooted deep inside your heart. Let's move in together, go on more dates, and get you used to my smell, so you won't turn red everywhere we go. Yeah. Thanks, Yuma. You're getting red too, Yuma. Yeah, because you called me by my first name all of a sudden. <laughs>
So, now that we were able to reconcile, our first night is gonna be... <laughs> Whoa! Oh, hold your horses! Well, now that you've fully accepted me for who I am, I'm going to take my chance! <laughs> Wanna go all the way and make some babies? You're getting too excited for our first night together, Honoka! Huh? What did you just say? I said, stop getting so excited! No, after that... Huh? I just called you Honoka! You called me by my first name! I can't... So cute! Later that night, Hanoka ended up passing out and slept all the way through the morning. Days like yesterday are gonna be the norm from now on. It wasn't the Hanoka I imagined, but I'm excited for our merry life nonetheless. This might be super sudden, but I, Yuita Niyama, have a huge problem on my shoulders. Yui-kun, please be my boyfriend! Um, you seriously want to date me? Yeah! Just like this, a cute girl was always confessing her feelings for me. Of course, I told her... No way! <gasps> Why did you decide your answer so quickly? Why? Yui-kun, I love you so much though. If there's something wrong with me, I'll do anything to fix it. Please! Um, Rina, I can't because you're my little sister! I can't date my biological sister! So yeah, the girl that keeps asking me to date her is my sister who's a year younger than me, Rena. Uh, can't believe that Rena isn't giving up yet. It's better than having a little sister that hates me, but she's my biological sister after all. Niyama-sama, you seem like you're troubled. What's the matter? Oh, Zaizen-san, uh, nothing. <laughs> Is it perhaps something that deals with your love life? What? Of course not! She's not right, but she's not completely wrong. Oh, I see. Onaga-san's talking to Niyama again. I'm so jealous. I want her to talk to me too. She has a pretty face, a good personality, and comes from a rich family. Plus, she's polite and is a hard worker. If only I had a girlfriend like her. Stop daydreaming! You're no match for the most popular girl in our school. You too. Uh, I can't just tell her that my little sister loves me so much that she's asking me to be her boyfriend. Yeah, it's really nothing. Just a small problem I have, but it's really no big deal. The problem is a problem no matter how big or small. I'm just worried because you've been sighing all morning. She's such a kind girl. Really, it's not a big deal, so you don't need to worry about me. Thanks for always being so kind to me, Zaizen-san. If you say so. But if you have anything you need help with, just remember that you can talk to me. I swear, she's so nice! Well, if I'm being honest, my only problem was dealing with my little sister. Yui-kun! Let's take pictures of the photo booth before we go home! Rina, I'm going to ask just in case, but what are you planning to do with the pictures you print out? I'm obviously going to show it to my friends and show off that you're my boyfriend. No thanks, I'm not going! What? Why not? Then, can you buy me a crepe instead? Okay, I can do that. Yay! I love you, Yui-kun! I know that I spoil Rina sometimes. Her love for me probably is a result of my own actions. Still, Rina was my little sister and important to me. But I was worried about her future because of the fact that she was my little sister. Rina, wake up! I'm still sleepy, Yui Kun. Come on, why did you sneak into my bed again? Things can't stay like this. We're biologically related siblings after all, and living like this won't help Rina in the future. I love you, Onichan. I told you. Nope, Yui Kun. I just want you to know how I feel about you. Uh, why is she so cute? Rina might give up if I have a girlfriend or some girl around me like that, but wait, that's it! I want a girlfriend or fiance! Did he go crazy from studying too much? Oh, please, honey, he's talking about another universe. He's ha he has a girlfriend in his imaginary universe. 
I'm being serious. And mom, don't say that. I asked my parents for advice about Rena. I see. You're right. We should be worried about Rena a little more. Okay. I'll ask my friends if they know a girl who might be able to be your fiance. Thanks, dad. Like that, my dad agreed to help look for fiance, but... I might be a bother, but it's so nice to meet you. What? Zaizen-san? The girl who came to our house as my fiance turned out to be Zaizen-san. In fact, turns out that we would be living together until we actually got married. Zaizen-san, why? I mean, I was happy if I was being completely honest, but... Yuita-sama, please call me Honoka. Oh, okay. Honoka-san, then... Honoka-san, why are you here? Turns out my father and your father were old classmates. Uh, oh. Never knew we had that in common. Yes, I was also surprised when I heard. But are you really okay with it? I mean, we're just a normal middle class family. Is there a problem with that? Uh, like family income? Meeting your expectations and all that? Didn't you have anyone else asking for your hand in marriage? Well, yes. There were a couple of others asking for my hand in marriage in the future. Children of the CEO of large companies and sons of celebrities. People like that. Uh, then why? You should have chosen those guys thinking about your future. Well, of course. I chose you because I wanted to be with you, Yuita-sama. What? Why? I mean, if you get married to me, you might be throwing opportunities for your future away. Well, the reason is... When I tried to ask what her reason was, the door suddenly opened. Hey, Yui-kun! What do you mean you have a fiancé? Um, basically what you just said? I have a fiancé. Explain it properly! Um, I'm telling you. You must be Rina-sama. It's so nice to meet you. My name is Honako Saizen. Honako Saizen? The most popular girl at school? Um, that nickname is kind of embarrassing. Why is Zaizen-san here? Well, Yuita-sama and I are planning on living together to prepare for our future. What? Live together? So yeah, that's that, Rina. Honoka-san and I are dating for marriage. I don't accept it! I don't! I can't believe you would do this even if you have me already! Why are you cheating on me? What do you mean, cheat? We're siblings! Hold on, you two. Calm down for a second. Honoka-san. I see it now, Yoitsu-sama. I know the reason you were upset during school. Rina-sama is... How do I say this? She just loves her brother very much, yes? A brother complex? It's not that! I just really love Yui-kun a little bit! Uh, yeah. Just like you heard. Rina has a brother complex. Oh, I see. That's a problem. I'm not sure how I could get close to a sister-in-law with a brother complex. Stop saying I have a brother complex! How about we do this? We all live together for one week. Then, I want you, Rina-san, to decide whether I'm worthy of Yuita-sama. Uh, of course my answer is a no from the start! Perhaps you're not confident? Huh? You're worried that I'm going to steal Yuita-sama away from you, right? <laughs> it's just one week. Rina-sama, it's up to you to decide whether I'm worthy. If it's still a no at the end of the week, I'll leave your brother alone. Fine, just one week then. I already know my answer, though. Yuita-sama, I did it! Rina-sama gave us our... Oh, uh, yeah. Right there! Stop the physical contact! Just like that, Honoka-san started living with us. I had assumed that she was a princess wrapped in a blanket, but surprisingly, Honoka-san was skilled with all household chores. Cooking, laundry, cleaning, she did everything perfectly. Her household chores skills were amazing. Is this okay? Wow. Y yeah. Rina and I were silent in shock. A superwoman had become my fiance. On the days we had school, she would wake up early just to prepare our lunches. Here are your lunches. Thank you. This makes me really happy. Hmm, I can cook too. Good luck in your afternoon classes. A note hidden in my lunchbox? She really does think of everything. What, what am I doing complimenting her? Yui-kun is mine. 
She prepared dinner with my mother, too. Hanukkah, John. You're so good at cooking. Oh, no, it's really not much, miss. Oh, gosh, you're flattering me. I'm too old to be called miss. Really, though, you don't need to force yourself to help me. I want to help. I want to learn your recipes as quickly as I can to prepare for the marriage. Mm. Oh, my gosh, look at you. It's like she's part of the family already. She's a pretty strong enemy, but I can't lose against her. The next day... Yui-kun, let's go home to get... Sorry, I'm gonna follow Honoka-san to the supermarket before going home. What? Rina-sama, would you like to come with us? N no, thank you. And the following day... Yui-kun, let's play a game. Sorry, Honoka-san and I are gonna do our homework together today. What? Rina-sama, would you like to join us? N no, thank you. Wait, hold on a minute. Isn't Honoka-san taking Yui-kun all for herself? Yui-kun is all over her, too! But he seems kind of happy. Maybe the only girl worthy of Yui-kun is someone like Honoka-san. I was avoiding Rina as much as I could, but I had to wonder if things were okay like this. I wonder if Rina's being sad all alone in her room right now. What's wrong? Oh, uh, it's nothing. Are you thinking about Rina-sama? Uh, no. It's obvious that you are. It hurts that you have to avoid Rina-sama. What? Uh, no, of course not. Maybe you should stop forcing yourself to stay away from her and go hang out with her. I want to spend time with you, Honoka-san. Let's not talk about Rina anymore. Yoita-sama. Come on, let's get back to work. Uh, okay. I wonder if I made Honoka-san feel bad. On the sixth night after Honoka-san started living with us, when I was heading to the restroom late at night, I saw that the lights in the living room were on. Huh? Who's awake this late? What? Honoka-san and Rina? What are they talking about? Honoka-san, are you serious about marrying Yui-kun? Yes, that was my intention when I came here. But why Yui-kun? He's just a normal boy that you can find anywhere. It's not like he's super rich either. <coughs> That's because... Rina-sama... I think you know my answer to that question already. What do you mean? I'm saying that you probably already know about Yuita-sama's charm. If I'm being completely honest, Yuita-sama is nice, but he's everyone's pet and he's also indecisive. What? Because of that, he worries a lot about other people and prioritizes them over his own well-being. Yeah, basically he's a wimp. What do these two actually see in me? Yuita-sama has those kinds of flaws. But there's a side of him that's extremely cool and manly. I'm sure you fell for those parts of him too, right, Rina-sama? Uh, well, yeah. Last summer, I needed to go home using the train. It's embarrassing to admit, but I didn't know how to buy a ticket at the train station and was in trouble. That was when Yuita-sama kindly offered to help me. We weren't even close friends at the time, so I was very cautious around him. But then I was in trouble again because I didn't know which train I needed to take to get home. So this time, he went out of his way to drop me home. I knew then that he wasn't a bad person or have any ill intentions. I felt calm when I was with him. I felt like I could rely on him if anything happened. After that, I gathered the courage to talk to Yoitasama in school. Um, thank you so much for helping me last time. Huh? Oh, it's nothing. I wanted to know if I could give you anything to show my gratitude. You don't need to give me anything. It's normal to help if you see someone in trouble, right? But... I helped you because I wanted to, so don't worry too much about it. It was that moment that I fell in love. Just because of that? Yes, just that. But to me, it wasn't something small. A lot of boys have tried to get close to me because my family is wealthy. They weren't interested in me, just my father's money. But compared to those boys, Yuita-sama didn't have any ulterior motive, so I was able to talk to him without worrying. I started to fall more in love with the kind and empathetic parts of him. I started to think that I wanted to help him if he ever needed help. It might be a silly story, but Yuita-sama taught me that this is how it feels to fall in love with someone. That's why I'm so happy that I can be around Yuita-sama now. I get it now. I've always wanted Yui-kun to do things for me and never thought about how I wanted to do anything for him. I swear, 
I can't win against her. I'm so terrible. Might have just been using Honoka-san so that I could fix Rina's brother complex. I don't deserve someone like Honoka-san. The next day was the final day of the promise week. I want Honoka-san to have Yui-kun. I mean, my brother! I want to leave my brother to you, Honoka-san! What? I'm sorry for always forcing my feelings on you. I'll do my best to not rely on you so much. Rina! I'm so happy that you have a fiancé as wonderful as Honoka-san. No, I don't think I deserve someone as amazing as Honoka-san. What? What are you saying, Oni-chan? I was using Honoka-san so that I could fix your brother complex. But even then, I still... I'm so sorry about everything, Honoka-san. I'm sorry to you too, Rina, for hurting you. Wait a sama does that mean I can't be around you anymore? I want you to stop being my fiancé. I'll talk to my dad and your father, too. Yuita-sama, I understand. You can't do that! Honoka-san, you can't disagree to that, too! So that's why I want another... Huh? Will you please give me another chance? A chance? Honoka-san, I want us to start from scratch, and for you to give me a chance to be in a relationship with you. What? Not as a forced fiancé, but as my girlfriend. I want to be in a proper relationship with you. And this time, I want to face Rina without being scared. Yoitasama. Onichan. Okay, I understand. I'd be happy to be your girlfriend. Thank you, Honoka-san. I promise I'm going to make you happy. Of course. Onichan, I'm not going to forgive you if you make Honoka-san sad again. I know. Thank you, Rina. Now that we had gotten through our problems, we were closer than before. I explained myself properly to my dad and Honoka-san's father, and they both understood. Honoka-san and I then made our relationship official. After that, Honoka-san and I stopped living together and spent our days as a normal high school couple. She was close friends with Rina too, so we would walk home together often. Anyway, you guys, maybe you should stop calling each other with honorifics already. Oh, it's uh, just a habit. This is just how I normally am. Okay, okay, whatever. Oni-chan, Oni-chan, you guys should at least kiss already. k k k kiss Hey, Rina, stop making fun of us. Honoka-san and I were both shy, so our relationship was moving little by little. I hope that Rina finds a wonderful boyfriend one day, too. Hey, Miyazawa, did you get a girlfriend yet? Whoa, scared the hell out of me. How can I get a girlfriend in such a short time? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Not too popular with the girls, huh, Miyazawa? My name is Hayato Miyazawa. I'm a junior in high school. One of my hobbies, you ask? Games and sweets. Sorry, I'm not popular with the girls. Oh, I see. So games are like your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's really cute. Yes, games are my girlfriend. That smarty pants is Natsumi Ayase. She's a senior at the same high school. If she kept her mouth shut, she would be cute. Almost TV idol cute. But this young woman does not particularly like me. She's always chiding me about my love for games or the fact that I don't have a girlfriend. Are you sure you can go on like this? You want me to be your girlfriend? <laughs> what are you saying? Please stop making fun of me. Huh? <laughs> You're so boring. Oh, looks like we got an order. I'll take care of this. How can she just blurt out that she'll be my girlfriend? Even if it's a joke, it gets my heart racing like crazy. I'm sure she likes toying with people's feelings. Uh, we were just in the middle of a conversation. That's why you can't get a girlfriend. Oh boy, she's always making suggestive comments. That's the kind of thoughts I had until I finished up my part-time job. Following day... Wow, this game is super fun! It was really worth waiting for the official release. Because I wanted to play the game, I was feasting on some junk food while sitting in the park. Uh, I've heard that voice before. From behind the trees, I could hear the voices of Natsumi and a guy talking. Miss Ayase, I've always liked you. Would you go out with me? Thanks, but I'm sorry. I've liked this other guy for a really long time. I see, but 
I bet I could be much better for you. I'm sorry. It really has to be him. I understand. So, I actually liked someone, huh? I didn't want to be seen, so I tried to leave the spot quietly without being noticed. But just as I turned to sneak away, I heard a voice call out to me. Oh, uh, hey, Miyazawa. Uh, did, 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 you, did you just witness that little, uh... Sorry. Yeah, I heard it. Oh, I see. Oh, well, <laughs> can't be helped, I guess. Is there someone that you like? What? Are you curious? D do you really want to know? No, not really. Huh? Uh, uh, Hayato, you're always so cool about everything. You really think so? Yeah, I wish you would have probed a bit deeper. I kind of feel uncomfortable after encountering that incident this afternoon. I just remembered that I had the same shift at work with Ayase today. Sorry about this afternoon. Uh, you haven't done anything that would merit an apology. It was a little embarrassing, though. Well, then I'm relieved to hear that. <laughs> I was so relieved that I let out a laugh. I thought she was laughing along with me, but when I looked up, she had that mischievous look on her face. Okay, quiz time. Does Natsumi really have a boyfriend? Yes, I think you have a boyfriend. Eh, wrong answer. No, she does not have a boyfriend. As a penalty for losing this little quiz, you must have a date with Natsumi. What? Stop joking! Oh no, getting a little antsy there. <laughs> Please. Anyway, why did you lie to that guy about liking some other guy? Well, if I say that, they give up on me, I guess. Give up, huh? I don't think it's you that decided who gives up or not. Yeah, that's true. But I don't want to hurt their feelings. I guess. But when the lie is revealed, somebody will be affected. You're pretty direct about it, aren't you? Yes, but it can't be helped, so I don't think you should feel guilty over it. As I was saying this, I looked over at Ayase, and she had this really serious expression on her face, which sort of surprised me. What's the matter? I'm just a little surprised that Mr. Game Lover would make such a serious comment. That's all. <laughs> How could you say that? Forget what I said earlier. Uh, uh come on. I'm sorry. Ayase, when you are quiet, you're very cute, but once you open your mouth, a disappointment. Too direct. Uh, you too. You're really smart, but a disappointment when it comes to your stupid games. Why do you keep trashing my love for games? Well, because you would probably value your games over a girlfriend. That's why. That's not true. Oh, really? Is that right? Yeah, I suppose. Hmm. See, I wanted you to be direct in answering that, like a simple yes. It's not as if she was going out with me or something, but with that, her shoulders seemed to slump in defeat. There is this game lover at my part-time job. When we first met, I really didn't have a good impression of him. But after getting to know him, he was fun to be around. I found myself watching his every move. But I always tend to make fun of him. Miyazawa is not always just thinking of games. He's usually contemplating other things. That gap makes him kind of appealing. He is also pretty good looking and has a strong sense of justice. I always find myself looking for him when going to school. Hmm, <laughs> a couple. I wish I had a boyfriend too. It would be nice if the person was Miyazawa. Hmm, <laughs> that's what I was daydreaming about as I took the train to school. Uh, what? Shocked, I hurriedly removed my earphones. Isn't that guy Miyazawa? Right in front of me, there sat Miyazawa, and next to him was a cute girl. The girl was very cute. She had brownish hair and big round eyes. What's more, she was wearing the same school uniform. That girl is wearing the same high school uniform. Is she his girlfriend? Yui, you know this better than me. <laughs> You're the one who doesn't seem to get it, Hayato. And Hayato is calling her by her first name? They seem so chummy. 
So that's why he seemed to know a lot about girls the other day. What is this? He's a game geek and has a girlfriend? I just can't believe it! But I must say, I'm pretty shocked. Hey, Miyazawa! I bet something good happened to you recently, am I right? When I went to work yesterday, Ayase came up to me smiling and all and started up again. I figured she would chide me about playing games again and was a bit apprehensive when she approached me, but she seemed a little different today. Yeah, now that you say it, I guess something good happened. I knew it! Do you know why? Because I saw you! Huh? You saw me? How embarrassing! Why would you be embarrassed? It's wonderful! That's all she said. Then she just patted me on the shoulder and walked away. So, she saw me drooling over that new game card, huh? How embarrassing. But come to think of it, she didn't mention anything about my games. What was up with her? Weird, I know. But it kind of puts me off balance when she doesn't poke fun at me as usual. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, I'm so sorry. I will exchange it right away. Don't give me that sorry crap! I ordered Napolitan, not Pepperoncino! Waiting all this time and I get the wrong order? Come on! Forget it! Instead, you want to go out with me? Uh, I really can't. What? You don't want to? Suddenly, I heard a loud crash as a cup fell to the floor. I rushed out and quickly got in between the customer and Ayase. Excuse me, sir. What the hell do you want, punk? This is not that kind of shop. You're not making sense, kid! You keep this up, I will be forced to call the cops. What? Are you threatening me? I know I'm not supposed to carry my phone with me during work, but luckily I forgot to put it in the locker before work. What? Are you serious? The cops? You're the one who screwed up the damn order. I apologize for that, but this and that are two different matters. All right already. Clean up this mess, would ya? Let's split this place. No longer in the mood for pasta anyway. You. Are you okay, Ayase? I, I'm fine. I'm so sorry. It was all my fault. That customer was at fault. But I screwed up the order. I usually don't make a mess of it like I just did. Maybe you're just tired. Why don't you take a break? I'll take care of this. Out! As I was cleaning up the mess, I cut my finger on a piece of glass. Ayase quickly took my hand. Her hand felt soft and warm. Uh, are you all right, Hayato? Yeah, I'm fine. Why are you so calm? There's blood! It's really nothing. Come with me quick. You need first aid. She grabbed my arm and pulled me into the back room. <sighs> Why did you do that? You didn't really have to almost start a fight. Sorry about that, but it just seemed like the right thing to do. Oh, seemed like the right thing? Give me a break. Although she was angry, she gently cared for my wound. But she was a little awkward doing it. She couldn't even put the band-aid on properly. My heart began throbbing when I saw that her hands were trembling. If it was your girlfriend, she would probably do a much better job. Huh? I don't have a girlfriend. Uh, but uh, I saw you on the train talking with a really cute girl. I, I, I saw you. Oh, that. Are you talking about Yui? <gasps> See? You said Yui, which proves she's your girlfriend. No, you got it all wrong. Yui is not that... I don't want to hear your explanation. You are just a game geek, and you have a girlfriend? It's not fair! What is this? Can't even put a band-aid on properly? It's all shriveled up. The band-aid that Ayase applied didn't even cover the cut, and it was all shriveled up and useless. Hey, man, what happened? Oh, it's nothing. Just a little accident. What's up with that? The cut's not even covered. Yeah, right? Ayase put it on. Ayase? I just saw her run out the back door, crying. You didn't cause that, did you? What? She was crying? Yeah, I'm sure. I grabbed Ayase's shoulder so abruptly that he'd look shocked. Sorry, I gotta go! Come to think of it, Ayase was acting strange today. I better ask her about it. As these thoughts crossed my mind, I opened the back door to the shop. As I opened it, I saw Ayase crouch down. She was sobbing quietly. 
Why are you here? I heard that you were crying, so I came after you to see what was the matter, that's all. There are times girls cry, you know? Yeah, we're human after all. But can I ask what this is all about? <laughs> was it because your first aid skills were, uh, mediocre? Ah, you jerk! I cared for you and patched you up and that's the thanks I get! I'm sorry, I didn't mean- Why would I be crying about that anyway? Then why? Please explain! <gasps> why are you so close to me? I'm just worried about you. Oh, uh, th th that reason why? Excuse me? I didn't hear you. But Ayase would not give me a straight answer. Then, after a while, she slowly opened her mouth. Uh, it's because I love you? Huh? Well, that was a real shock to hear. I can't say anymore. Then she turned her gaze away from me. My heart started to throb. I could almost hear it thumping in my chest. Am I hearing this right? Did she just say she loved me? But Miyazawa, you already have a girlfriend. You keep saying that. I really don't have a girlfriend. Uh, really? Why? Why? I want to ask you the same thing. Maybe it's because I'm a gamer? Uh, would you stop jerking me around? You like this girl Yui, right? As I said, you got this all wrong! But she's real cute! Who wouldn't fall in love with her? Ayase looked like a crying child. At that moment, she looked so cute and vulnerable. Emotion started welling up inside me. So in order to put all this misunderstanding to rest, I finally said, I've been trying to tell you. Yui is my little sister. Huh? Your sister? You guys don't look anything alike. Yeah, well, I took after my dad and she was more like my mom. I can't believe this. I really mucked things up and I think I was all worked up about it. I'm really sorry. I really don't know why I'm apologizing. I think you're way better looking. For a guy who's always playing games, you sure are a smooth talker. <laughs> to be honest, I really like how you're straightforward and direct about everything. I'm just glad you don't dislike me. I never said I disliked you. Yeah, right, you didn't. <laughs> well, in the end, everything turned out fine. After that incident, Ayase never again made fun of me for being a game geek. But strange as it may sound, I kind of miss being ridiculed by her. I always thought that she disliked me for some reason. Maybe that's why I was irritable towards her. It turned out to be the complete opposite. Then about a week later, I happened to be in the break room with Ayase. Man, the silence is killing me. Why isn't she saying anything? While I was sitting there a little uncomfortable, to say the least, I said, Ayase, you never tease me about my games anymore. I kind of miss it. <laughs> Hayato, you are so naive. Why is that? See, like just now, you always give me that are you for real look. <laughs> I do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you really don't know, do you? I can't help it. I just know that I really like you. See, what, 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 what did you say? I think I've fallen in love with you. <laughs> She's all flustered. She's so cute. How could you just blurt that out without warning? Sorry to upset you. Uh, you're always so direct. Oh, da, da, da. So, uh, so, so, what are you gonna do now? Are, are you gonna go out with me? Yeah, I'd be happy to. After that, we started dating. Ayase started playing games and is now even more into it than me. So recently, we spent a lot of time together. I never expected Ayase to become my first girlfriend. Man, you never know what life has in store for you. Hey, gamers are pretty decent folks. My name is Shoma Ohashi. I'm just your average run-of-the-mill high school student. I have a crush on the girl in my class named Yuki Midorikawa. It all started when I met her in the library. I learned we just happened to have similar tastes in books. And from there, we started talking. Next thing you know, I took a liking to her. Arikawa-san is one of the prettiest girls in her grade. Honestly, she's way out of my league. 
I like you. Will you go out with me? Yeah. I'll be in your care, Ohashi-kun. Huh? I daringly asked her out, and it was somehow a success. Afterwards, I heard through the grapevine that Midori Kawasan really liked me, too. To be honest, in the beginning, I was really surprised, but as we started to spend time together, I gradually realized we were becoming a couple, and my happiness grew. And before I knew it, we'd already been dating for a month. I wonder what she wants to talk about. Ah, maybe a celebration for our month anniversary? Midori Kawasan said she wanted to talk and meet her on the roof after class. I don't know what's up, but I'm sure it's something good. I went with a positive attitude, not knowing what I would be told afterwards. Sorry, Ohashi-kun. I want to break up. I know we just started dating, but I'm really sorry. Huh? Wait a minute. Can you tell me why? I'm sorry. I won't tell you. It's just a simple breakup. No way. Well, I'm really sorry. Uh, Midori Kawasan! This is a joke, right? There's no way. I didn't imagine that the important thing that she had to say was breaking up with me. It only dated a month. But it wasn't a joke or a prank. And from the next day, the distance between Midori Kawasan and I began to grow. Uh, Midori Kawasan! Uh. At least let me talk! No oh, good. She left. Uh, I just wanted her to explain why. If I did something bad, I would do my best to fix it. But the fact she won't even let me talk to her is just... Oi, Shoba! What's with the long face? Uh, hey, Dad. It's nothing. Did you need something? Yeah! I've got some news that'll bring a smile to your face! What? When you say it like that, it's scary. Well, you know, Shoma, I have a fiancé for you! A fiancé? Huh? A fiancé? That's right! I have a regular at my work, you see. And it's their daughter. My dad is a company employee. It's a rather large and well-known company. So this regular customer, this means, to put it simply, the company has had some mutual benefits. And as a result of this, they are putting their children through a political marriage. Huh? But I didn't know anything about a fiance. This is the first time I've heard about it. It's because I didn't tell you. It was a surprise. <laughs> What a troublesome surprise. So, on your next break, you'll go and meet her. It'll be your marriage interview. By the way, this marriage is extremely important to my job, so try not to do anything rash, will you? Just as I thought. In the end, this is all for you, isn't it? Hey, don't say that. I wouldn't have gone ahead with the marriage if she wasn't a worthy partner. Just relax. They showed me a picture of her. She's a real beauty. On top of that, I heard she's a good-natured girl. On the contrary, you're quite lucky, no? You get to marry a girl like that without lifting a finger. Ugh, a fiancé? Honestly, I have zero interest. Since Midori Kawasan broke up with me, I couldn't care less about love or marriage. Whatever. Do what you want. Oh, I see. Well, keep your schedule open on your next break. So I dragged my feet to meet my fiancé, whose face nor name I knew. Since the girl I actually liked broke up with me, I didn't care what became of this wedding. And I didn't care about love anymore. Let's just get this wedding over with. But something unexpected happened. Shoma! This is the honorary daughter of the Midorikawa group, Yuki Midorikawa! Huh? The girl that's been introduced as my fiancé was my ex who just broke up with me, Yuki Midorikawa. After that, I finally got the full story from both our dads. My dad and Midori Kawasan's dad are each company's representatives. They have worked together for many years that they even have a deep friendship in their private lives. So through a mutual understanding, they decided to have their children marry and further develop both companies to construct a strong bond, which brought on the political marriage. So what do you think, Shoma? Just as beautiful as I said she was, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Seems like you're nervous. Well, that's to be expected. Of course I am. Seeing my ex for an arranged marriage is definitely left field. Well, let's get this show on the road. Shoma, you'll live with Yuki-san from today. Huh? Why so sudden? Learning about each other is number one. And didn't you say it yourself? 
I could do as I please with this proposal. Well, yeah, I said that, but... You'll live together after you graduate anyhow, so think of it like practice for now. But what about Midori Kawasan's feelings? Of course, she's already agreed. Isn't that so, Yuki? That's correct, Father. I have no objections. Seriously? So, Midori Kawasan and I are officially engaged and started our life together. Such a fancy apartment. Seems like such a waste for two high schoolers to live here. Are we seriously going to live together? My partner is my ex. To be honest, I can only see an unpleasant future ahead of us. Uh, I'll prepare for the worst. Welcome home, Ohashi-kun. Uh, uh, um, I'm home. Dinner's ready. Or would you rather hop in the bath first? Um, I'll eat dinner first. Okay, I'll get the table set. Huh? She's acting completely normal. Thought it'd be unpleasant between us. Why is she acting so normal? Did she forget she broke up with me? No, 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 no. There's no way. But the more I see Midori Kawasan's attitude, the more it seems that way. She seems to have no problem with the situation we're in. And is acting the same as before we broke up. Oh, maybe she's even nicer to me than before. I want to ask. What does she think of our breakup? Does she even agree with the engagement? I have too many questions. But her change in attitude was so much that I couldn't bring myself to ask anything. I was bewildered and, to be honest, afraid. As pathetic as it is, I didn't find the situation horrible. Now that's because I like Midori Kawasan. I'm still in a state of limbo after being dumped. And on top of that, I'm living with Midori Kawasan. To be honest, it's not like I'm not happy. What if I talk to her and break off the engagement? Then we'll drift even further apart. What a mess. This time I've got to get back up on my feet. But that's what's scary. Going with the flow. But I can't stay like this forever. I'm coming in. <coughs> Midori Kawasan! How's the temperature? Shall I wash your back for you? No, I'm okay. But we're engaged. Even if we are, us bathing together is a bad idea. Hey! I'll be out soon, so just wait. What in the world? Just what is she thinking? However, Midori Kawasan's actions with these unknown intentions didn't stop there. Oh, Hashikun, can we sleep together? Midori Kawasan? No way, that's no good too. Really? We're engaged, so it should be okay. For the time being, let's sleep in separate beds, okay, Midori Kawasan? Okay, if you insist that much. Okay, seriously, what the heck is she thinking? She's regretting getting engaged, isn't she? Say, that attitude of hers isn't because she doesn't like the idea of being engaged to me, right? But she's already dumped me once. It's only natural she wouldn't like me. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what she's thinking. However, Midori Kawasan only increased my worries virtually every day as she continued to approach me. She made me lunch, walked with me to school, and even though I told her no already, she asked again to take a bath together. She's really acting as if she forgot she dumped me. Is there a man who wouldn't be mistaken after going this far? The thing is, I still like Midori Kawasan. That's why I ended up thinking this way. Things like, maybe she still likes me, or maybe she actually regrets dumping me. So maybe if I clearly express my feelings for her again, we can go back to the way things were. I should clearly set aside time to talk with her. Just as I thought that, something else happened. Yes, of course. Hmm? Is Midori Kawasan on the phone? I have to be quiet. Just as you said, I'm doing everything right as a fiancé. Huh? So, don't worry. On the other hand, about that promise... Just as her father said... Could it be that everything Midori Kawasan was doing was instructed by her father? But Dad did say this engagement is important to both companies. Uh, so that's how it is. Midori Kawasan has no choice but to marry me. I could tell by the way she talks that that's what her father told her. That's why she acts like that. I think about it a bit, it makes sense. She dumped me once already. There had to be a reason why she came at me like that even though we split. 
I completely interpreted it in a convenient way. <sighs> well, that's that. I took a guess at everything and put the lid on my own feelings. So, I asked Midori Kawasan if we could talk about something. Oh, Hashikun, you had something important to talk about? Sorry this is so sudden. I wanted to talk about what happens afterwards with us. Afterwards? You mean as an engaged couple? Yeah. Even though we're engaged, I think we should call it off. Huh? It was strange from the start. We ignored both of our wishes and continued on with this talk of getting engaged. You actually hate the idea of it too, don't you, Midori Kawasan? You're wrong, that's... I kind of understand with your family there's some benefits to marrying me. Honestly, I don't understand what exactly, but let's try to persuade our dads as much as possible that it's not unprofitable. If we talk with them clearly, I'm sure they'll understand. So you don't have to push yourself to do strange things for me. Sorry I made you do such painful things. This is fine, surely. She'll be happy I finally broke off the engagement. Is what I thought. <laughs> eh? Midori Kawasan, why are you crying? Sorry, I'm going back to the bedroom. Uh, wait a minute! She was crying, wasn't she? But why? Are they happy tears? There's no way from the looks of it. Is it because I asked to call off the engagement? But why? My questions were bottomless, but I never get the answers. Midori Kawasan didn't come out of her room for the whole day. I didn't see her the next day either. I don't think she's eaten, and honestly, I'm pretty worried. And the cause of it, I'm sure. Why was she crying? Why won't she leave the bedroom? I have absolutely no clue. I have to talk with her one more time. Midori Kawasan, you awake? Sorry, I'm coming in. You can complain as much as you'd like afterwards. Huh? Oh, Hashikun. What's this all of a sudden? I was worried about you. You've been cooped up in the bedroom since yesterday. That's... I'm really sorry. It's my fault you've been worried. To be honest, I don't understand why you were crying. But I do know the reason you did. That's why I have to apologize. And I wanted to talk with you one more time. You don't need to apologize. I'm the one in the wrong. It's all my fault. I'm really sorry, Ohashikun. I've just kept on being selfish. I didn't tell you the reason we broke up and didn't apologize for it. Then, I just lived with you as if everything was normal. No, that's... It's only natural if you hate me. To think you could like me again. Huh? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I don't like you. Oh, Hashikun, you hate me, right? That's why you wanted to call off the engagement. No way! I was thinking you hated me this whole time. That's why I thought you'd be happy if I called off the engagement. What are you talking about? Have we both misunderstood each other? Seems like it. Let's calm down and start this conversation over. First, can you tell me the reason you broke up with me? That's... Again, sorry for not clearly explaining, but I couldn't say it. I have a fiancé that I have to marry, so we have to break up. Huh? My father told me out of the blue, you have a fiancé, you're going to marry him in the future. Of course I didn't agree because I was dating you, but it was useless. At my house, what my father says goes. He didn't listen to anything I had to say. I could only give up. I thought this would just cause trouble for you. That's why, at the marriage interview, I was really surprised. No way I imagined that my fiancé would be you, Ohashikun. I see. That's why you dumped me. But a brief explanation would have been fine. I planned on telling you, but I definitely thought you would hate me, so I was scared. Either way, I dumped you, right? I honestly didn't think you would like me. That's why I tried to appeal to you in different ways to get you to like me again. Then, if I got you to like me again, I would tell you everything. But in the end, I made you want to break things off. I was thinking since our hearts were separated, we couldn't get back together and I burst into tears. I'm sorry I made you feel so sad. 
breaking up with you is really tough. Eh? O Oashikun! No, I'm sorry. I just went on without asking the reason why. Ah, uh, um, what do you mean? I heard the phone conversation between you and your father. You mean yesterday's? Yeah, you said I'm doing well just as you said. So I thought all those things you did were just instructions from your father. That's wrong. That was a conversation on if I was being a good fiance. I see. That's good. Honestly, I thought about it a bit, if you still liked me. But you dumped me, and I couldn't think any other way. And I misunderstood that phone call. That's why I thought it'd be good if we broke things off. Because I truly like you. I didn't want you to have any more painful memories than this. Oh, Hashikun. But I was wrong. The fact that you still like me is just... So, you hating me is my misunderstanding? Yeah, I still like you, you know? No way. I can't believe it. Same here. Who would have thought that was the reason you dumped me? And from that, a sort of miracle happened. Hey, can we pretend I never said anything yesterday? I really do like you, Midori Kawasan. From here on, I want to be together forever as an engaged couple. Yeah. Can we pretend I never said anything on that day, too? I want to be with you forever. We resolved our misunderstandings and could make up with no issues. The next step is a married couple. We reestablish a bond that can't be broken, and we're happy. Pop idols, a figure that everyone admires. The present sparkles like a diamond, and the audience immediately falls in love as they watch those girls dance on stage. But now, the popularity of idols has been declining. That doesn't mean to say that pop idols don't have what it takes to be a star. The fact is, this is happening all over the country. Actually, it was pretty rare to see a pop idol in the streets nowadays. Thanks for coming today, everyone! Elisa chan you were amazing! We'll be back again to watch you! Goodbye! Good job, Elisa. I, Kira Yoshino, congratulated the pop idol, Elisa Fuji, who was also my childhood friend. Thanks, Yo-chan! You did great again! <laughs> you think so? Hey, Elisa, what do you say about quitting your job as a pop idol and becoming an online streamer instead? Nowadays... I told you, I can't, Yo-chan! Elisa... It's true that pop idols might be old news now. Being a pop idol costs a lot in terms of advertisement and renting performance locations, so I know that everyone is moving towards online streaming, which can be done with just a phone and editing software. If you know that, then why... Wouldn't that be like I'm running away from my dream? I've always wanted to be an idol. Of course, I think that online streamers are amazing too. But isn't quitting my dream to be an idol by becoming an online streamer just because it's not working out for me, rude to both idols and streamers? I get what you're trying to say. That's why I've watched you this past year. Elisa, your singing and dancing is amazing. So it's just sad that you only get to perform in places like this where only a few people can watch you. That's not true. I'm not succeeding because I'm not working hard enough. If I work harder, things will get better. Elisa. I wouldn't say anything if this really was something that could be solved by hard work. Elisa's super pretty, and I'm not just saying that because she's my childhood friend. She was good at dancing and singing too, so the only reason I could think of for her not becoming popular was the environment she was in. Most of all, I've watched her working extremely hard since we were kids. Now that she was working to gain popularity as an idol, she was clearly overworking herself. I was just worried about her. It's okay. I can still work harder. Elisa. Okay? Just believe in me, Yochan. Okay. In the end, I wasn't able to stop Elisa that day either. Of course, I was worried about her, but it also didn't seem right to try to stop her from achieving her dreams. But suddenly, things changed. <sighs> huh? Is that Elisa? That's weird. She's usually not out in the courtyard during lunch. Elisa, what are you doing looking up at the sky? Oh, Yochan. Why do you look so sad? Uh, um, it's nothing. It's not nothing, right? 
You're clearly faking your smile. It's really nothing. Elisa. What? What? I want you to talk with me if you're going through anything. I'm always here for you. Yo-chan. The truth is, I was made fun of for working as a pop idol. What? Who's making fun of you? The girl in my class, Kirara Tendo-san. Oh, her. Kirara Tendo was still a high schooler, but she was a popular online streamer that had over 300,000 subscribers. She didn't just have a pretty face, but she was also a good dancer and singer. Because of that, she was on the rise in the streaming world. That's why I wanted Elisa to strive to be like Kirara if she were to switch her platform. But I never would have thought that she would bully Elisa like this. I'm so angry. Yeah, you have every right to be. You're working extremely hard. And she just gets to make fun of you, not knowing what you're going through? No, it's not that. Huh? Of course I'm angry about the fact that she insulted me. But I didn't have anything to say back when she made fun of pop idols. That makes me feel so angry and pathetic. Lisa, I've never seen a Lisa like this. She was always a gentle and kind girl. The whole thing must have made her extremely angry for her to act like this. It's okay. If you have that kind of mindset, you're not pathetic at all. But I... It's okay. Don't worry about it. Let's go inside for now. You're gonna get sick. Okay. I took the sad Elisa to the office. I spoke to the teacher and got special permission for Elisa to use the shower. After Elisa headed to the showers, I wiped my head using the towel I borrowed from the teacher and headed to a classroom. Is Tendo here? Yeah? Oh, it's you. What? Did Elisa come crying to you? I want to talk to you in private. Can you come out here for a bit? Oh, look at you sounding so confident. Fine, I'll go. When Tendo agreed, I brought her into an empty classroom. Why did you hurt Elisa? Hurt her? I didn't though. I just told her the truth. Okay, I'll change the question. Why did you make fun of her for being a pop idol? What she does shouldn't be any of your business. It just irritates me. How she's sparkling her eyes by chasing after an impossible dream. What? You're smart. You should know it too. How reckless her dream is. <sighs> Honestly, idols are so stupid. But Elisa's working seriously to be a successful pop idol. No one has the right to make fun of her for that. <laughs> Stop sounding so righteous. What she's doing now is letting her talent rot with no one to watch her. Or do you guys not even understand that? I know that. If I'm being honest, I actually told Elisa to try online streaming. Oh, isn't that something? Then you should convince her to quit being an idol already. No. I decided that if Elisa wants to continue her work as an idol, I'm going to support her decision. That's why I'm never going to bother her about online streaming again. Perhaps I mistook you for being smarter than you actually are. You're actually so dumb. No wonder you're her childhood friend. Thanks. That wasn't a compliment. I know that. I just want to thank you for one thing. Thank me? Yeah. You helped me make up my mind. I'm gonna make Elisa an idol that you'll look up to one day. <laughs> Don't joke around so much. If you had that kind of power, you would have already done it. I was trying not to interfere in the past because it's Elisa's own dream. Plus, it's not like it's an easy task. But I'm not going to stay quiet if someone makes her cry. I'm going to make sure you see that you were wrong. And once I do that, you're going to apologize to Elisa. Hmm, sure. Then what are you going to do if you aren't able to make her successful? Doesn't matter. Hmm, then if you lose the deal, you need to be my property. What? If I win, you have to obey everything and anything I say. Do we have a deal? Fine, whatever. I'm gonna make you regret what you said to her. Okay, it's a deal then. I'm warning you just in case, but until this thing is settled, you better leave Elisa alone. I know that. You better keep your promise too. Of course. Okay, lunch is almost over, so I'm going back to my classroom. Okay. <laughs> He's so stupid. This is almost like an automatic win. But if Kira could make a deal like that so confidently, he must have some kind of plan. But either way, this is about whether I think that Alisa has become a successful pop idol. 
Basically, no matter how popular she becomes, I'll be the winner as long as I don't admit that I was wrong for what I said to her. Hmm, I wonder what I should make him do. I was feeling as though I had already won and was starting to think about the things I would make Kira do for me. Sorry, Elisa. Do you think you could just go home without me today? Huh? Why? I just need to stop by somewhere. Okay. I'll be fine. It's nothing to worry about. Oh, okay. After making sure that Elisa smiled again, I left her side and called a certain someone. Yeah, Auntie, there's someone I want you to introduce us to. Yep, it's about Elisa. That's why before I go to the office directly, I wanted to talk to you, the president of the management company. After I told her what I needed, I hung up the phone. Okay, now I just need to tell Elisa about this. After getting her permission, I head to Elisa's house so that I could begin my plan. Once I got to Elisa's room, I told her about my plans. She was super surprised at first, but after hearing my explanation, she was smiling with happiness. Then she agreed to my plan. We began our plan the following day. The first part of the plan was to take a video of Elisa singing and dancing. As I took the video on my phone, Elisa continued to dance. Once we were able to film enough clips, I quickly got to editing. Yo, Chan, I didn't know you could edit videos. When you said you were gonna be an online streamer, I practiced editing so I could help you. I'm sorry. You don't have to be. It came in handy, didn't it? Yo, Chan. Anyways, we're still at the first fight of the battle. I'm sure it's gonna get busier from here on out, so you need to get your physical health in check so you don't get sick, okay? Yes, what we're doing now is preparing for the huge show. I wanted Elisa to end the plan with the dream that she always had. A little after a month, Hey. A girl that looked very angry showed up in front of me. What's wrong? What's going on? What did you do? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't fool around. Why is Alisa all over commercials on the online streaming website? I didn't do much. Maybe big companies finally started noticing Elisa's talent. I don't believe you. It's not like she was used for advertisements on online streaming services in the past. I don't believe that a bunch of different companies suddenly started asking her to advertise for them. What did you do? Nothing much. I just filmed videos making sure that Elisa's talents were clearly visible and tried to sell that to companies that were selling products that fit her image. But what if there was a commercial made from the beginning? What? If you know what type of image the company wants to have, as well as their vision for the product they want to sell, it's easy to know what kind of ad they want to have. If I sent in videos where all we needed to do was edit the product into the final video, they won't have any complaints with the final commercial. Plus, idols with less popularity can be cheaply hired. You were calculating that too? Huh. But isn't this like copying what online streamers are doing? Even if she gains her popularity like this, it's not because of her work as a pop idol. At the very least, I won't admit that she succeeded like this. Don't worry. The real plan starts here. What is this? Elisa's having a huge live performance this Sunday. This is an admission ticket for that. I'm busy, you know? Don't you try to take Sundays off? Or are you running away? Fine, I'll go. At Sunday... Why are we backstage? Tendo and I waited in the backstage area. I thought it would be best for you to watch from here. It's great, right? Special areas with the best view. I want to sit down. Well, I do apologize that I didn't even think to prepare a seat. It's whatever. More than that, you just make me wonder whether you're actually just dumb. You're so rude all of a sudden. Because... This concert hall is too big! I know you love your friend, but this is too much, you know? Tendo was yelling while pointing at the seats in the hall where there wasn't a single person. Well, that does make sense. Come on, just watch. Gosh. Two hours after that. You're kidding, right? Tendo was shaking while looking at the hall that was now completely full. See? It's a good thing that the hall was huge, right? Tell the truth, what did you do? Yeah, Alisa was in a bunch of commercials, but there's no way that she could gain popularity this quickly. There are two explanations. The first one is the content of the commercials. The content? You didn't notice? In every commercial, Alisa was singing a cover. Oh! Do you get it now? 
Basically, people already know that Elisa has a pretty voice and that she can sing. Second explanation is that Elisa is simply just really cute. Stop being a simp, stupid. I was kidding. What I was trying to say is that even though her commercials were on streaming platforms, she wasn't an active streamer. What does that mean? When there's less information, people get curious. What do you think would happen if we released information that Elisa would be having a live performance as an idol? People would get curious and want to go. Their curiosity and the fact that they could see pop idols who are rare nowadays. Basically. But even then, this amount of people. The last reason, it's that the admission ticket is extremely cheap with a price of only $3. What? Are you... What? Are you joking around? But isn't that... Aren't you basically just losing money like that? Yeah, that's what would happen normally. What are you talking about? The costs for this live performance were all paid by the companies that Elisa advertised for. What? How did you... It was probably because they bet on her future, but also because of her personality. Her personality? She's confident and doesn't stop to achieve her dreams. It makes people want to support her. She's an honest and kind girl too. So once companies talk to her in person, they happily agree to sponsor her. How is that? Yo, Sean! Did you finish getting ready? Yeah, how does it look? You look great! <laughs> Tendo san What? Just watch me. I'm going to do my best out there so you can see just how great a pop idol is. Ugh. Okay, Yo-chan, I'm going out there now. Okay, good luck. And have fun out there, Elisa. Okay. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Once Elisa waved both her hands at the crowd, the music started. In order to capture the hearts of the audience, she started with her favorite song. Hmm. <laughs> pop idols aren't even all that. I don't think that's true. Huh? It's true that idols don't get the same spotlight now that online streamers started getting that headlight. But that doesn't mean that idols aren't amazing. It's just that times have changed. What are you trying to say? I'm just saying that idols have their own charm. Elisa will probably show you that today. After that, we quietly watched Elisa dancing and singing. One song after another, she performed the songs that she'd been practicing all this time. By the end of the concert, What's happening? Alisa Chan! One more song! One more song! Tendo was surprised after seeing just how hyped the crowd was. Why are they so excited over this? This is the charm of idols that online streamers don't have. Kira. Of course, I think that you and other online streamers are great too. You guys do your best to edit so that you can show high quality dances and songs that keep the audience glued to the screen. But being in the same room, instead of on the other side of a screen, gets people so much more excited. A performance that's much more than sitting in front of a screen. Elisa experienced this firsthand when she was young. That's why she's been working hard to achieve her dream as an idol. That's why. I didn't know it would be this amazing. <sighs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> Yo, Chan, how was it? Once the concert was over, Elisa came over with a satisfied smile. Seems like she was able to have fun out there. You were super amazing. <laughs> Uji, Tendo-san, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry for making fun of pop idols. You were right. Pop idols are super amazing. I'm sorry for making fun of you, even though I didn't know anything. Tendo-san, lift your head up. Uji, I'm just happy you were able to see that. I'm sure that if you were able to see how amazing idols are, a bunch of other people will feel the same way. Yeah, I'm sure everyone will understand the power of idols. I even wish that I could be an idol for a second. Really? Then let's do it! Huh? You're super pretty and you're good at singing and dancing too, so you'd be perfect! Um, uh, that's... Tendo looked over at me for help as Elisa tried to convince her. That's why I said, Sounds like a good idea. Doesn't hurt to try. I gave her the biggest smile. Tendo gave back a hesitant smile. But after Elisa's insistent convincing, she came out with her idol debut after a few weeks. Five years after that, hey, 
Is it the new debut by Elisa Chan and Kirara Chan the most amazing thing? Of course it is! They're the two legends that brought back the popularity of pop idols! Elisa and Kirara became so popular that almost everyone around the country knew their names. There were even fans that called them legends. As their manager, it makes me proud to hear comments like that, but... Hey, Kirara-chan! You're hugging onto Yo-chan again! You can't steal Yo-chan! It's not like he's yours, Alisa. It's whoever takes him first. You can't! Leave him alone! They were always arguing over childish things like this. They were top idols in the public eye, but were just kids behind closed doors. Just like this, I was sandwiched between the arguments of these two. And I'm going to continue supporting them from the shadows.